The Lord be with you. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church and School on the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. We have a guest organist today, Jacob Springler. We're thankful that you are here. We welcome you. A reminder that this morning we continue our Bible study, which is entitled Christians in a Woke World. This has been well received, and you're invited to join in uh, right after the service, 1030 to 1130, in the lower level of the church. Look at the announcements that are in the bulletin uh, that you need to know about, the calendar for this week, and so forth. We do have a very special part of our service uh, this morning, and it'll be quite near the end of the service, and it's going to be the commissioning of our participants in the 2022 LCMS National Youth Gathering. On, uh, uh, was it Friday, and then uh, some, some of us on Friday in a bus, some of us on Saturday in an airplane, are going to go to Houston, Texas for the youth gathering. And uh, so they will be commissioned today. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Yeah, Evan. Good morning. Um, like Pastor said, we're very excited. We leave Friday, uh, finally. Um, so this should be my last uh, announcement on the gathering. Um, so you'll see the 16 students, um, or most of them, I think. Uh, you'll see the 16 students, and we'll recognize them today. But there's also two other students I want to uh, recognize. So we have Sadie Powell and Adria Funston. And Sadie and Adria are going to the gathering as well, but they're serving as YAVs, which means uh, Young Adult Volunteers. Uh, Sadie is a junior at Concordia, Nebraska, and Adria is attending Iowa State in the fall. And um, they are serving the gathering in the convention center area. And so they'll be doing things like interactive learning, um, informational, uh, you know, there'll, there'll be a lot of booths and, and different activities that they'll, they'll help run and facilitate. And so when you think about it, we have thousands of high schoolers coming to this convention center. And our own uh, Trinity alum, Adria and uh, Sadie, will be there um, serving as young adult volunteers. And uh, this, is, this is a big uh, part of our mission here at Trinity uh, moving forward is um, sticking with the students after they leave um, Trinity School. So, um, and this was something I did not advertise for or promote. This was something that they um, pursued on their own. So they actually leave on Tuesday. And so while, while we recognize the 16 students that we're taking, um, we also encourage you to think and pray for uh, Sadie and Adria as well. And the, our rocket is still up downstairs. You can go check it out, um, see the pictures of our youth. But I, I took a um, poster board and we put up a little bio for Adria and Sadie as well. So go check it out, um, read about them, what they're studying in college, and feel free to write them a letter of encouragement um, or a prayer as well. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. Are there any other announcements? Please take a moment to greet those around you, and then we will stand for the opening hymn, number 901. Good morning.
turn to page 167, our order of worship today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Turn, please, in your order of worship, order of service, to the introit. The heavens declare the glory of God. Day to day pours out speech. Their measuring line goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The heavens declare the glory of God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Continue to send your messengers to preserve your people in true peace, that by the preaching of your word, your church may be kept free from all harm and danger. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 66. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious abundance. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse, you shall be carried upon her hip and bounced upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass. And the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants. And he shall show his indignation against his enemies. This is the word of the Lord. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Their voice has gone out to all the earth. The epistle is from Galatians chapter 6. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor, for each will have to bear his own load. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then... As we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And as for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. 
carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. The one who hears you hears me, and the one who rejects you rejects me, and the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I invite the boys and girls to come forward. Good morning. The Bible verse that we're going to focus on today is from Galatians and it's chapter 6, verse 14. But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Raise your hand if you've ever heard somebody boast. Now, the older kids are raising their hands, but if I use a different word for boast, I bet you all of you will raise your hand, because you might not know what boast means. Boast is like bragging, to brag. So raise your hand if you've ever heard somebody brag. I think we've all heard somebody brag. What does that mean, to brag or to boast? Who can explain or give a definition of that word? What does it mean to boast? Yeah, Anderson? Anderson gave a real good definition. One example of boasting. When you have something and nobody else has it, and you say something like, oh, look at what I have. So that's talking about, that's uh, when you talk about something that you have. Have you ever heard somebody boast about something that they've done? Something great or amazing that they've done? How do you feel when you hear somebody boast? You want to answer, Mackenzie? How do you feel when you hear somebody boast? Don't feel happy? Maybe sad? Ah, it's possible we might feel jealous. We We might feel angry. Don't think we feel good. So, the next question is, have you ever boasted about something? Have you ever bragged about having something or having done something, having accomplished something? This one you don't have to share, all right? Because I have two. Yeah, somehow we think it makes makes us feel really good to say, look at me and look at me. I want to talk to you about Paul. Paul was a servant of God and a messenger of Christ. And at first, you probably remember this, Paul didn't believe that Jesus was the risen Lord, that he was the Savior and the Messiah, but God changed that, and Paul became a Christian by God's grace. And one of the epistles, uh, which is a word for letters, like writing a letter, we call it an epistle, that Paul wrote was called Galatians. Can you guys say Galatians? Right. In the last section of this epistle, Paul wrote, But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, did Paul boast? Yes, Paul boasted. But not in himself. 
and what he had or what he had done, but Paul boasted in the cross of Christ. Paul boasted in Jesus who suffered and died and was buried and rose again for Paul and for all the world, all the people of the world. You know, when people boast, it's usually in themselves and what they have done. I won the game. I got the prize. I got the best present. I scored the goal. I made the basket. We could go on and on. When we boast like that, sinfully boast, pridefully boast, it's like we're saying, me, me, me. But Paul the Apostle invites us to join him in boasting in the cross of Jesus Christ. Instead of me, 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 it becomes he, he, he. He, Jesus, paid for all my sins. He, Jesus, died in my place. He, Jesus, made me brand new in the waters of baptism. He, Jesus, helps me resist temptations and keep my God's commandments. He, Jesus, comforts me and gives me peace when I am sad or afraid. He, Jesus, strengthens my faith when I hear the gospel. He, Jesus, guides me to my home in heaven. Far be it from us to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus has become the Savior of you and me and the whole world, all people. When we boast in Jesus, boys and girls, that's not sinful. That's not sinful, prideful bragging. That, rather, is confessing and telling the world the good news, the good news that they also have salvation through faith in Jesus. Fold your hands and let's pray. Say the words after me. Lord Jesus Christ, you died on the cross to save me and to save all people. Forgive me for boasting in what I have done. Help me to boast in what you have done. Because of you, I am saved by faith in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. You guys can go back to your seats and we'll join in singing, Jesus has come and brings pleasure eternal.
and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Our text is the Holy Gospel. Dear friends in Christ, when you read the four Gospels, you read brief and concentrated accounts of the life and ministry of the most important person who has ever lived, Jesus Christ. You read in the four Gospels the accounts of Jesus' actions, such as his exorcisms, healings, and other miracles, and also his passion, his death, his resurrection. You read, too, of Jesus' teachings, his parables, his sermons, his instructions, and his words of comfort. Now, besides all this, in the New Testament Gospels, you read also of another activity of Jesus, how Jesus sent messengers. The Lord, you know, chose 12 men to follow him, and he sent these apostles out to preach and heal in his name, announcing the coming of the kingdom of God. In the Gospel of Luke, from which our Holy uh, Gospel today is taken, uniquely among the Gospels, we also read of something else, how Jesus sent out another 72. They, too, were the Lord's messengers, the messengers of his peace. And still today, the Lord of the church has his messengers. Here in church, your pastors bring you the message, your Lord's message of true peace through the forgiveness of your sins. There in your homes and in your callings, you in turn, who have received in this place God's message of peace and gift of forgiveness, you there become the Lord's messengers of peace in your daily lives. Today's Holy Gospel related our Lord's sending of the 72. These individuals were like all of God's messengers of all times and places have been, they were servants of God. They were workers for God. They did not put themselves forward, but they were chosen, appointed. They did not invent their message. It was given to them by Christ. They were not running the show. Jesus was in charge. They were, you could say, humble representatives of the Lord of the harvest. The task entrusted to them they should not anticipate would be easy or without risk. I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves, remember Jesus' words. Yes, some would not welcome these messengers of Jesus, would not welcome them at all. Yet the task of these messengers would remain a good one and a glad one. Peace be to this house. They should announce, Jesus said. And those believing their word would receive from their lips the gift of God's peace. Eat and drink, Jesus told them, with those who receive you. The messengers of Jesus would enjoy and share fellowship with those to whom God's peace came. And Jesus said, heal the sick and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. God's power and grace would touch the lives of those people through the messenger's message. Well, St. Luke tells us few actual details of this missionary journey of the 72. I'm sure if written down, their, uh, their experiences could fill books. But the evangelist only relates their exuberant report, which the 72 brought back to Jesus upon completion of the mission. Lord, they said, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Says Jesus, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Jesus means that in the kingdom ministry of those messengers of Jesus, Satan was repulsed and cast out. Not because the 72 themselves were such great shakes. Not because the 72 had some special power in themselves. But just because they were the Lord's messengers. The Lord's messengers of peace. No one who has ever lived has been more important than Jesus. Jesus is the Son of the Father, true God from eternity. 
who took on flesh, that is, who became like you and me, just like us, except without sin, true God and true man. And why did God become man? Not, certainly, to congratulate his human creatures for our good behavior, for as we said earlier, I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. And as St. Paul in Romans 3 testifies, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yet neither did God become man to punish or to condemn. He did not become man to lord it over man. No, God became like you because of love, to serve you. Jesus was the Lamb of God sent into the midst of wolves. Jesus allowed himself to become the prey of those hungry wolves, condemned and crucified by mankind who hated him. Jesus was also put in that place where the punishment of God upon human sin was poured out. Yes, he, Jesus, took it. The punishment, the wrath, the curse of the law, which should have been directed toward you and me. Rising from the dead, then, to console your conscience with the forgiveness of sins. As the risen Christ said to his disciples on Easter, peace be with you. Yes, your conscience, I say, is consoled. Your conscience today. For Christ did not only have his messengers in bygone days, but he has his messengers of peace also today. Jesus, who suffered to save you, has his messengers of peace here and now, and those messengers are your pastors. We are servants only, not lords. We, like the 72, do not put ourselves forward, but are chosen, called, appointed by God, called by his church and solemnly charged by Christ our Lord to bring his much-needed message to the world. Peace be to this house. Peace be to this man. Peace be to this woman. Peace be to this child, we say. And by faith, this message of peace is received, bringing heavenly peace to all who believe it. Yet how poor and sad for those who cast this peace away when the Lord's messengers speak. As Jesus stated in verse 16, the one who hears you hears me, and the one who rejects you rejects me, and the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. It will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Yes, the Lord's messengers of peace are to be valued as just that, the Lord's messengers of peace. And as you know, soon, Trinity Lutheran Church will be welcoming another. Pastor John Doldy looks forward to his ordination and installation as pastor here in two weeks, Sunday afternoon, July 17th. And we look forward to meeting Pastor Doldy and welcoming his family to Trinity. Yet the key thing about him is simply this, that he is sent to us as the Lord's messenger of peace. So Pastor Doldy will join me in baptizing, in absolving, in catechizing, in preaching, and in administering the supper, the Lord's Supper, right? With me, he will be devoted to announcing the kingdom of God and the salvation that comes through faith in Christ. He will carry out his duties supported by your prayers, confident that Christ has sent him, and certain that the power is not his, but Christ's, and that the message and word to speak and to share must be the Lord's message, the Lord's message of peace. And it's all so that you can also serve as messengers of peace Yes, the Lord's messengers of peace to those around you. For while it is in this house 
through the public ministry of his word and sacraments, that the Lord of the harvest is pleased to build up his people, his church. Yet the everyday living out of the faith, the Monday through Friday sharing of the Christian word of good news, that takes place also in all those places where you go, where you live, where you are. For God has exalted you, naming you his own children in the waters of baptism. He has put his spirit within you. God has made you in this life a mother, a father, a grandparent, a son, a daughter. God has made you a neighbor to many, a classmate, a friend. God has chosen and appointed you for particular vocations, callings like these. And in those vocations, you live as one whose sins are forgiven. And you relate to those whom you meet as one who announces and shares the message of divine peace with them. For that you are sent. It's not that you have made yourself what you are, but the Lord, according to his grace, has chosen and appointed you. He chose you for salvation through faith in the name of his Son. And for as long as you live on this earth, he also works through you in those places and stations to which he has called you to love your neighbor. Sometimes you love your neighbor in deeds, actions of Christian love. And sometimes you love your neighbor through words of truth and love as you share the truth and grace of the most important person who has ever lived, Jesus Christ. And... Sometimes we feel like lambs in the midst of wolves, it's true. But we remember and we take heart that the Lamb of God bore all sins and divine wrath on the cross. He defeated the power of the devil. The judgment of the law has been put upon him and falls not any longer on us. All our enemies have been defeated. Although we may encounter troubles for now then, we are confident in the final victory through Jesus Christ our Lord and that he is with us at all times through all things. Thank the Lord for the peace that comes through Jesus and thank the Lord Jesus for sending his messengers of peace. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's stand and confess our Christian faith using the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord of the harvest, at your son's instruction, we pray that you would continue to send laborers into your harvest field, that the plentiful harvest may be gathered into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you sent Jesus to preach your word, and he likewise sent forth the apostles and the 72. Grant us faithful pastors who receive your word with thanksgiving and deliver it without fear, even when wolves threaten to devour them, and who trust that in the Lord their labor is not in vain. We pray you also to grant us faithful teachers to fill the vacancies on Trinity Lutheran School's staff. Lord, in your mercy, Merciful Lord, your Son sent the 72 with the charge to enter homes to proclaim peace and declare the coming of your kingdom. Grant our homes to be places in which your peace dwells, that husbands and wives love and honor one another, 
Children are nurtured in fear and faith toward your name, and your kingdom comes among us. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, in this sin-sick world, nations engage in violence, injustice, and wrongdoing. Give peace, we pray, to all nations, that all people may enjoy the comforting goodness of your will being done on earth. Hear our prayers on behalf of all who make, administer, and judge our laws, and provide opportunities for your gospel to be proclaimed without hindrance. Lord, in your mercy. God of all compassion, in your Son, you have borne the burdens of all mankind. Look with mercy upon Ron Anderley, Daryl Axtell, Julia Bickle, Isaac Blodgett, Jeremy Brown, Carmen De Catlin, Dale Larimer, Gary Peterson, Dwayne Rinderknecht, Patricia Schultz, Phyllis Sliger, Carol Stellwaga, Nancy Van Ossen, Doran Welch, Butch Wilkie, and all whom we now name in our hearts. According to your gracious will, restore these servants with strength and healing now, and grant them patience to await the resurrection on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. Generous Father, keep our hearts from greed, that we may joyfully support your church and those who serve us in your name. Keep us from pride of heart that delights more in what we do than in what you have done. Accept with our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving the tithes and offerings we bring this day. Lord, in your mercy. And gracious God, send your abundant blessing upon all the planning, final planning, and all the doings in Houston, Texas of the LCMS National Youth Gathering. And upon all our participants, protect them in their way by your holy angels. Lord, in your mercy. How awesome are your deeds, O Lord. You have planted us and directed us to pray that you would send workers into your vineyard. You have answered that prayer through your Son and his church. As your kingdom draws nearer each day, teach us to boast only in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, rejoicing that our names are written in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for the offering.
Please find in your bulletin the insert uh, entitled, In All Things, National Youth Gathering, Commissioning, and Sending. And I invite all the uh, youth participants and also the adult leaders to come forward and uh, gather here uh, at the altar rail. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He is over all things. Say, all things. He is over. By him, all things were created. Say, all things were created by him. Things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, thrones, powers, rulers, and authorities, all things were created by him and for him. Say, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things. Say all things are after him. And he holds all things together. Say all things hold together in Jesus. God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Jesus and through Jesus to reconcile to himself all things. Say all things have been reconciled to God through Jesus by the peace he made through his blood shed on the cross. And you too, though once enemies and alienated from God because of sinful behavior, have been reconciled to God in all things. Say, in all things. You have been reconciled to God by Christ's death. In all things, you are holy in God's sight. Say, in all things. You are holy in God's sight through Christ, free from accusation in all things. Say, in all things, you are free from accusation, and in Christ you are without blemish in all things. Say, in all things, you are without blemish, and as you continue in your faith in all things. Say, in all things, continue in your faith, established and firm in all things. Say, in all things, remain established and firm, unmoved from the hope of the gospel in all things. Say in all things. Remain unmoved from the hope you have in the gospel in all things. Say in all things. Remain in the gospel which brings hope in all things. Sent by our Lord Jesus Christ who is over all things, who created all things and who holds all things, I commission you and send you as representatives of this congregation to the 2022 LCMS National Youth Gathering in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We, members of Trinity Lutheran Church, with the help of God, promise to pray for you as we send you to the city of Houston to experience our God who is in all things. Go now in the freedom and forgiveness that Jesus provides, established in him, and by his will remain unmoved in the hope of the gospel. Amen. You may return to your seats. Our service today will conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Please stand. Let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Almighty God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes down from above, that your word may not be bound, but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve you, and in the confession of your name abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.